What's up, poker people? My name's Wes, and this is my poker vlog. Today, we've got a 136 No Limit Hold'em cash game session coming from Prime Social in Houston, Texas. I bought into this game for $5,000. In today's vlog, you're gonna see they keep giving me kings, people are gonna get a white girl wasted, and someone's just gonna give me a lot of money for no apparent reason. This footage is taken from the Prime Social YouTube channel. This is the live stream that they run multiple times a week. I do host a game there on Wednesdays and Saturdays. This is a 136 game. You can see that Josh is limping in for $6. I have Ace 3 suited and decide to raise it up. I make it a little bit smaller than I normally would, and I'm not sure why I did that. You'll see that I do make it 30 and we're gonna get multiple callers. Normally I would make this 36 to $40. Uh, you could even go bigger if the people are calling a lot of raises. Um, especially you got three people, it's a one, three, six game. So you have three people in the blind. So everybody's incentivized to put some money in there. We go five ways to the flop. Eight, six, three, I have bottom pair. I do have a backdoor flush draw, but against all these opponents, um, I don't really want to bet this. I just want to check. I do turn a spade, so I have a flush draw now. I check this and it gets over to Edgar who bets 105. Then Josh calls and I check raise to 360. So it's gonna say that I check raise to 260. That is just an action tracker error. They put in the wrong number. Josh calls the 360. I'm gonna miss my flush draw on the river. I still just have a pair of threes. So if Josh just had diamonds, I don't need to bet to get him to fold, I have the best hand. I don't think he's gonna fold an eight, but I did think, man, it would really suck if I checked here and he just has some sort of six or river to five and wins this pot. So I decided to bet 425 to see if I could get him to fold some of the one pair combinations that beat me and he just quickly shakes his head, starts getting his chip together and calls. I show my ace three and it takes him a minute, but he is gonna show a better hand of eight six for top two pair. Are you kidding me? Okay. Well, I wasn't trying to get him to fold two pair, so. In this hand, Doc is gonna raise up tens to $40. Will on his left, he's gonna make a re-raise to $90. It's not a very big re-raise, but it is a legal raise. I'm gonna look down at king queen offsuit and I'm actually gonna be a little bit unsure of what to do. Now it is a raise and a re-raise. Now in these games that I play in, you don't get punished a lot when you call in these spots. So for example, doc doesn't then forfeit very often. Um, so you can call and you're gonna get to the flop most of the time for the re-raise amount. But the thing is, you know, you're gonna be out of position. Um, but king queen is a good enough hand. You're not worried about playing king queen out of position where maybe a hand like queen jack or king jack king 10 you know those hands i would probably fold um king queen going to the flop oh flop top pair and i do have a backdoor flush draw but top pair is good enough for now i'm gonna check doc's gonna check man will's gonna fire pretty quickly he bets 250. so i'm definitely gonna call I'm just gonna take a minute and Check my man out and see if he's giving off any tells. And he's just staring right back at me. I make the call. Now, this is the first time I'd ever played with Will, so I didn't have any information on how he would play other than he seemed like a, you know, a looser type of player just from what I had seen so far. Turn is a deuce of spades. Doesn't help me, doesn't hurt me. I'm going to check it over to Will. Pot's got $777 in it. He goes all in for $600. I go ahead and make the call. Oh, he shows ace king and I don't improve. I'm going to lose this one, but I'm okay with how this one played out. When I have top pair like this, king queen is going to be the best hand a lot of the time, even when somebody is putting money into the pot. I'm just glad he didn't have more money because the turn and river could have been very difficult for me to play out of position with my king queen. He would have gotten a lot more value from me if he happened to be a lot deeper. Edgar has seven under the gun. The big blind is six and he's going to make it $15 to go. That's a pretty small sizing, but I do think this is better than just limping. At least you tell the table, hey, I got something. He's going to get a couple callers. He's going to come around to me. Pocket Kings. Okay. Definitely going to re-raise this. Question is, how much do I want to make it? 
What do you guys think? I decide $75 is the right amount. He's gonna get around to Edgar. He's gonna call pretty quickly. Doc's gonna call with A7 suited and then Will is gonna complete as the last player in. We're gonna go four ways to this flop. Top set. I got top set. King Jack eight. So on a hand like this, I'm gonna try to get value from people that are chasing flush draws. Since there's only one king left, it's hard for someone to really have a two pair combination like king jack or king eight. So mostly I think I get called by flush draws and people with second pair. So I bet a third pot, it's a pretty small bet, but I didn't think there were a lot of hands that could call. Ah, uh, the turns of heart. He definitely called if he had hearts and I gave him a good price. I don't really wanna bet this just in case. I'm just gonna check. If he bets, I'm okay with that. I'm just gonna call. So he does bet 250. We always know the board compared, which would give us the absolute best hand, but we might still have the best hand. So I'm just gonna take my time, call 250. Oh, another heart, come on. I don't know if I can even call a bet. If this guy bets anything, I'm probably gonna have to. Oh, he checks, okay. I've got top set, what do you got? Turns out he has jack nine, no hearts. I am gonna win the hand. That was scary. There's a $12 straddle on this hand. Alan is in the hijack. He's gonna raise it to $50. Oh, he's gonna show David his hand. Must be a fun hand. Doc's looking at seven five. He's gonna make the call. Oh, 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 looking back at the hand. Oh, I guess Doc doesn't like seven five suited. He folds on the button. It's gonna fold all the way around to me. I'm last to act. I've got that king queen again. It worked so well last time. I'm gonna play it again. Uh, this time I don't hit a king. It's just jack high board. I'm gonna check it over to Alan. Check, 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 I check. Alan has to decide, does he want to see bet this jack six deuce flop? And he does, he bets $75 and I'm gonna call. Now I don't recommend doing this very often when you're out of position. The times that you do this, you should do it in position, but I'm gonna turn an open-ended straight draw. What a genius call. Check it over to Alan. Alan has to decide, does he want to bet this turn card after C-betting the flop? He's going to bet 150. And at this point, I decided that since I'm not in position, I don't really have a lot of control over what happens on the river if I miss. So I'm going to go ahead and check raise, see if I can take control of this hand. It gives me a chance to bluff the river or value bet the river should I get there. I raise it up to 430. 430. Toward Allen. Uh, how much? He just said at 430. Listen. I was honestly a little bit scared just with King High in the spot, but then Allen started smiling and laughing and okay, okay. It looks like he's gonna fold. Please fold, please fold, please fold, please fold. Yes, King High takes it down. Shots. Oh, oh, shots, 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 shots. Shot. Oh. I hear the word shots. Well, all right, let's take some drunk people's money. Will's gonna limp in in the cutoff, which allows Austin to raise queen eight suited on the button. Gets around to me, I look at king five suited. Now I don't love this hand, but I'm seeing an opportunity here to try to steal against the late position lump and raise. 
So I'm gonna three bet to $75. Shots! As you can see, this table is getting hammered, so I'm gonna be playing a little bit differently for the rest of this session. Serena is gonna call with deuces. It's over to Will. Do you wanna call 75 after limping for six? Oh, he almost did. Nope, no, nope. gonna try to play more conservative. Now it's over to Austin, the original Razor. Oh, looked like he was gonna fold, but he's reaching for chips. He decides to call. We're going three ways to the flop, and I've got the premium King 5 suited. I miss, but I do flop an open ended straight draw. I'm gonna go ahead and continue on this board, see if I can get these guys to fold. I bet half pot for $100. If I do make a straight, it's going to be hard to get much value from it. So I'd really rather everybody just fold at this point. Serena folds her deuces and it's over to Austin with queen eight. He's got top pair. I don't think he's going to be folding. He calls $100. Whoa, now the turn is the four of hearts. I've got an opportunity here to act like I had hearts. I decide I'm going to do that. And I put Austin all in for his almost $400. Uh, he doesn't look very happy. He's thinking about what to do. Now, he might have a tougher than normal decision to make because of all the beers he's been drinking. He looks at me. He says, Wes, right, Wes? Yep, that's my name. He ends up saying right here, I think I have the best hand, but I think I'm gonna have to fold. So that sounded pretty good to me. Man, he really seems perplexed. He's got top pair. Is he getting bluffed? Absolutely. Now, while Austin is deciding what to do, we're gonna cut to this already in progress, drunk discussion about the height of a player at the table. Yep, this entire conversation has to do with whether somebody is taller than six feet or not. Oh, it looks like the jury's back. Austin's gonna well, he thought he was going to fold. Oh, he's still going to fold. He just wants to show I'm folding top pair, everybody. Good fold. I'm under the gun plus one, and I'm going to raise up ace 10 offsuit to $25. Folds over to Trey on the button. He three bets me to $75. Everybody else folds, and it's back around to me. Now, normally, I'm just going to fold ace 10 offsuit in this spot, but... Man, these guys are wasted. I want to play as many pots against them as I can. And I flop an ace. The flop is a six deuce. I have a top pair. I have an okay kicker. I check it over to Trey. He decides to check behind. He turns a jack. I'm going to go ahead and bet this turn. I can still get some value from some pocket pairs that he just doesn't believe that I have an ace. So I'm going to bet small. I bet only 60 bucks into this pot. Trey decides to call. River is a deuce. If I thought my hand was good on the turn, it should still be good on the river. Now it does improve my kicker to a jack, but I just don't really think that Trey even has an ace. I'm gonna go ahead and bet. I'm continuing with the small sizing. I bet 125. It's over to Trey on the button, 125 to call, and he raises to $500 and then stares me down. I don't know what that means. This is a pretty weird spot. He played it pretty passively after three betting pre-flop. He checked back the flop. He just called the turn, and now on the river, he wants to make it 500. I honestly didn't know what to make of this. It doesn't seem to fit with many bluff or value ranges. So I make the call. And he shows pocket sixes. He flopped a set and rivered a boat and decided to slow play it. And he got paid off. FNU has ace king under the gun. He reaches for a green chip and plops it in without saying anything. Well, that's just going to be a call, buddy. Limping ace king under the gun because you forgot to say raise. You know, Tran decides, I'm going to try to bust this guy with 8-4. I know he tried to raise, but he didn't do it right. Well, guess what? I've got Ace-King. 
I'm gonna give this guy a chance to make it right. I make it $35. It's gonna get over to Doc, who's gonna call. FNU had a chance to re-raise and he didn't. It just calls a 35. We're gonna go four ways to the flop. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Wes Cutshaw. On Queen Jack 7, I've got two overs and a gut shot straight draw. Everybody's gonna check it over to me and I'm definitely gonna see a bet. I go ahead and bet $75. Doc's gonna call. It's over around to the other ace king. He also has two overs and a gut shot straight draw. But he's gonna F and fold. Gets heads up between me and Doc. Oh, I turn an ace. I'm in position against Doc. He's reaching for chips on this turn ace. He's going to bet 150. Not really sure if he's doing a blocker bet with some diamonds. I initially was thinking that I wanted to raise in this spot, but I thought more about it. I decided I was just going to call, but you can see the wheels are turning. Why would he lead out on this turn card? Ace King is still a very good hand, and I do still have a draw to the nuts. All right, I'm just going to call. Let's see a river. The river's the jack of hearts, so the front door flush misses. I don't think this jack on the river changes anything. If he had two pair or a straight or even a set of sevens, let's say, on the flop or turn, he already had me beat. This card doesn't change that. Looks like he is going to bet 250. It's a pretty small bet. I'm never going to raise in this spot, but with ace king, I was really trying to decide, do I ever fold here, make a hero fold, or do I just call? I'm just trying to be very calculated about my decisions and think things through. Although I think ace king in this spot is almost always just a call. Sometimes he's just going to have ace jack or king 10 and we're going to lose. Even the queen jack that flopped two pair and decided to lead out when the scary ace comes on the turn, starting to make some bigger hands available. I make the call and Doc shows. Jack nine offsuit, are you effing kidding me? I straddled $12 in this hand. Serena has pocket tens, but she's not at the table. That hand gets folded over to David with pocket fives. He's like, yeah, I'm just going to limp in. Now Alan has queen jack offsuit. He's in the hijack. Alan sees all this dead money. He's like, yeah, I'm going to raise it on up. Trey snap calls with a better jack. He has king jack. Doc has ace three offsuit. Gets out of the way, but FNU has pocket kings and he just calls. And this time you can tell he did it on purpose. I have ace jack offsuit in the straddle. I've seen a limp, a raise, a call, a call, another call. And I am thinking about making a big re-raise. Now this isn't gonna work because FNU has pocket kings, but I like the idea. I like the concept of putting pressure on these guys. Let's see what sizing I go with. Raise it up to $250 over the $60 raise. Well, that's going to get David to fold his fives. Allen just has queen jack offsuit. I don't know what these guys are laughing about, but hopefully it's not my re-raise. Oh, Allen decides to call with queen jack offsuit. Trey's going to get out of the way. Doc is congratulating himself for folding pre-flop, and it's over to F and U, who just calls again. I don't effing get it. There's a queen for Allen, but there's an ace for me right behind it. Ace, queen, six. Checks to me. $831 in the pot. Definitely going to see that with my top pair. Going to make it $400. So over to Allen, who does have second pair. Starts thinking about it. Okay, I got a second pair. I got a backdoor diamond draw. He's going to look over and he's going to notice that F and U only has about $800. Actually, it's closer to 900 left. 
It looks like he's gonna start thinking, man, even if Wes doesn't have an ace, that guy probably has an ace and I'm gonna end up having to call 400 and then eight. So he does, he makes a good fold and it's over to F and U who now decides to go all in with pocket kings now that he's seen an ace on the flop. It bricks out and I win the F in hand. Great. I played Crouch for the first time. It's fun. A couple weeks ago and I rolled for 20 minutes. Oh my God, it's so much fun. The other guy started tipping me. Craps is the best. So when fun. You, when you're rolling and you're hitting numbers and yeah. the table is just high-fiving. Yeah. And it's like the only team. It, like it is so much it. fun. I like watching. Just like and then you got the one guy that's playing the don't. Yeah, I'm not talking to anybody. Like, <laughs> I know because I've done that before, but anyway. So. The action's on Doc. He's in the hijack. He's going to go ahead and raise it up to $60. He's going to fold around to me. I've got effing kings. Yeah, so I'm probably just going to call his bet. Especially since I'm out of position. Ah, just effing around. I re-raise, don't worry. I made it 200 to go, and it's over to David who has ace-queen offsuit. Now, if you think David bought in for $8,000 to fold ace-queen preflop, you were right. Allen's out of the way. Trey's got ace-jack offsuit, but again, he's seeing a raise and a re-raise. Unless he wants to make some big four bet with ace jack offsuit. I think this is going to be going into the muck. There it goes. Back to Doc, the original Razor. All right, he calls $445 in the pot going to the flop. Oh, ace high flop with pocket kings. I do have the king of diamonds and Doc just leads 400 into me. He bets almost pot. I guess this is just a guy who has ace king and doesn't know how to play it. Maybe he even has a set of jacks, but it's really hard for him to have anything that isn't beating me. I do have the king of diamonds, so I block the king high flush draw. If I were to call this bet on the flop, would I be able to get value from a worse hand going on later streets? I don't think so. I do think about this for some time because it is a weird move to bet into the preflop razor, but this guy's just gotta have an ace and I think I'm just gonna have to fold. These are the spots I'm trying to do a better job of just getting away from these hands. I make the fold and Doc had pocket queens? Are you effing kidding me? Well, the poker guys give me pocket kings again. They wanna give me a do-over. I raise it up to $30, first player in the pot. Serena calls 30. Folds over to Doc. He says, I call. Austin's also going to call. We're going to go four ways to the flop. Now I'm going to tell you guys right now, the action tracking on this hand, it gets pretty messed up. So there's actually four players to the flop. Jack, seven, five, two spades. I do have the king of spades. And Doc just bets into me, 155. I'm not really sure what to make of this bet. So I decided to just call and get to the turn. The turn is another seven, and now Doc checks to me. I assume I have the best hand at this point, so I'm gonna go ahead and value bet, but it's not gonna show on screen what I bet, and I don't know what it was, so I'm just gonna guess it was around $250. That's probably what I would bet in this spot. And Doc is gonna raise to $765. Now at this point, I have seen that he had queens on that last hand. And I add that to the fact that he had a jack in that other hand. And I really don't know what to think about any of his bets at this point. I think my hand is too strong to do anything other than just call and hope that the river is a nice brick. I do make the call. And just as the river card is coming out, he checks dark. So I guess I'm just going to check behind and I say, yeah, I check. He's got seven five for a full house. Man, he could have gotten a lot more money from me. Got pocket sevens here in the cutoff. I'm gonna make it $25 to go. Gets around to Allen. Allen's gonna three bet. And he had said he was gonna get me tonight, so I asked him. Is this, this crazy is the one? over there? I don't think so. Yeah. 
I said, okay, then I call. So he's got queen 10, I've got pocket sevens. I flop a set and he flops and opened into straight draw. I'm out of position. I'm gonna check it over to Allen. He makes the C bet. The question is, do I wanna check raise here or just call? He bets 150, I decided just to call. Turn is a complete brick. I don't see any reason to lead out. I'm just gonna check again, let Allen make a bet. Pot has $557 in it. Alan's gonna bet $450. So now when Alan makes such a big bet, I do think this is a time to go ahead and make this pot a little bit bigger. I guess I would do the same if he had bet super small. If he had bet a more marginal size, I could maybe just call. But then again, I'm just gonna have to lead the river. So at some point, you basically have to spring the trap and put the raise in. The question is always how big to go. Everybody knows that the standard 3X is an okay sizing to raise anybody at on almost any point, but you have to be a little bit more creative and think about the range of hands you could be up against. I did a little bit less than 3X. I think it's a bet that Alan can call if he has a hand like two pair. Um, it also charges him if he does have some sort of draw like he does. Alan counts his stack down. He's got three and a half thousand dollars. He's gonna decide what to do and he says, half white, a quarter he's all in and I snap call. The river's a brick and Alan just mucks his cards. I'm gonna take down a 5.3K pot with a set of sevens. Okay, this hand doesn't have any graphics to go along with it. I'm just gonna let you guys listen to the commentary cause it's pretty hilarious. We could go all the way. $50, Wes raises a 50 bucks. So I'm not, I haven't looked at Let's see. I say Wes has a pocket pair. Let's go with, uh, let's go with eights. Seven, six, ten is the flop. I'm bet out 50. He calls. Checks. Wes checks. Oh, Wes, I want to see you pull over eights right now so badly. That's a little bit. And I'll kill this. This is a full beer. Look at that. Well, go, man. One hundred's a bet. Uh oh. Uh oh. And he calls. You're a professional. Yeah. Oh my God! Show me eights! Oh my God! I caught it! I caught it! <laughs> oh, legit, Carter! Let's go, bro! I put Wes on the head. Keith Cardwell, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Yo. <laughs> oh, I called Wes on eights. I love it. I love it. Oh my God! I feel amazing. <laughs> Wes, I did it. Yeah, I know, right? Let's go. Carter, yeah. shout out. Let's go. You saw that, man. Come on. Come on. <laughs> oh, man. That's awesome. So clearly, even the commentator is drunk. Okay, so in this hand, I'm trying to get somebody's attention to say, look, I haven't touched my cards. I want to restraddle. Uh, there was a $12 shot up at the 24 and now everyone's doing the same thing. I haven't looked. Hey, I haven't looked. I want to straddle. I haven't looked. So in the games that we have like this, uh, fun games, big games where people are splashing around, you got to let this kind of stuff happen. I've very rarely seen someone take advantage of this. In fact, I can't even think of a time that somebody said, I haven't looked. I wanted to restraddle and they had actually looked at their cards. Now going all in pre-flop blind, that's a whole nother story, right? So it does get around and get as high as a $200 straddle and then people stop straddling and it's over to Doc. Doc just limps in. Now in these spots, I almost never limp in. I'm always coming in for a good size raise. 
You have so much fold equity when there's a $200 straddle out there that I see no reason to limp in, but I don't even play this hand. I'm gonna get out of the way. But Trey doesn't get out of the way. Serena calls 200. David folds for 100 more. Yeah. Alan, it's your option. Do you wanna make it $1,000 to go? Alan just checks, going to a flop. King seven, seven is the flop. And now we get to see people's cards. Apparently Serena has five, three offsuit. Alan has queen nine offsuit and doc has pocket five. So nobody's really going to love this flop. But Serena decides to take advantage of being first to act. You don't get to see what she bets, but she's going to bet this flop and she's going to get both players to fold. And she's actually going to take this down with 5-3 offsuit. Almost an $800 pot. You can see here I have 8K in front of me. I bought in for $5,000, so I'm up $3,000. And here you can see just how much fun I'm having. This hand, Allen raises to 30. We're gonna get a bunch of raggedy cards calling. You know, Subaru has got the best hand. He's not even at the table. As far as playability, the best hand. I like my hand, Queen Nine, for some playability. I'm gonna call the 30. We're gonna go five ways to the flop. Oh, I flop an open-knitted straight draw and a flush draw. It's gonna check to me and I decide this is a hand and a board that I actually want to lead out on. Look at that, I have 60% equity to win this hand, but I only have queen high. Even Allen with a pair of sevens has me beat right now. If the turn is a brick, my equity is gonna shoot down to half that. So I really wanna take this down if there's any chance that I can, or if I start building a pot and I get there, I can keep betting, so. I let out for $90, Alan calls. It's over to Austin who seems perplexed on what to do with ace five offsuit, but in the end, he makes the right fold. Oh, I turn my flush and my straight and a straight flush redraw. Question is what size to bet here? Oftentimes, Alan is gonna have straight draws and flush draws as well. So I feel like I can bet decent. I bet two thirds pot. I'm okay if Alan raises. If he just calls, I'm just gonna probably bet a little bit bigger on the river. Alan finishes his drink before deciding what to do. Got two bear, man. He's not gonna fold. He might even raise, but he decides just to call. Ah, uh, the river is another club. This is definitely gonna kill my action. It's also possible that now I'm beat, but I think that I can bet this hand and fold to any raise. I'm not gonna bet too big. I just bet 300. I think he can call with a lot of his two pair hands. And he does have two pair. All right, well, Alan's gonna leave. Oh, okay, well, he's coming back. What are you gonna do, buddy? You got two pair on this scary board. Any nine makes a straight at this point. Alan just doesn't seem to believe me. Multiple pots now, he's called with weak hands or even shoved with an open ender thinking I might have nothing. And now he's stuck with two pair on a pretty bad run out. I wouldn't be surprised if he folded. I wouldn't be surprised if he called and I would be very surprised if he raised with this hand. He's gonna show one pair, oh, two pair and fold. So I ended the night up $3,000, a pretty good session. Guys, please subscribe. I'm trying to get internet famous.